and I needed to get to college. So I had to go to a college that was close to home because I had to work. And the closest college to the house in driving distance was Mercer University, which was Atlanta Baptist College. Just became Mercer University, it was Atlanta Baptist. And this was, you know, 1973, in the kind of the heart and the heat of the, the Jesus movement. I mean, this was a, there was a lot of Jesus talk on these campuses. And of course, I remember telling my father I was going to Atlanta Baptist College, and he, Atlanta Baptist College? <laughs> yeah, he said, Baptist, Baptist, it's close to home, you could work, it's fine. <laughs> and um, I had this friend, I actually spoke to him the other day, his name is Glenn Borders, and um, he used to wear this cross that was like six feet by two feet. Long hair and a giant cross. But we talked about the gospel a lot. And I had this friend that I ended up marrying named Pam and her mother, my uh, mother-in-law is now with the Lord, uh, Betty. And Pam and I would go out on a date and then I'd take her back to the house and then Pam's mother and I would stay up till two o'clock in the morning. Seriously, talking about faith issues. And uh, you, know, you, you see how God just kind of orchestrates your path. And there I was, one afternoon, because this is really like a family reunion, and Stuart Dowerman was leading a Messianic singing group at a Christian Missionary Alliance church in a co-sponsored event between the Christian Missionary Alliance church and then American Board of Missions to the Jews, which to me was like, what does that even mean? <laughs> but you know, I'd been studying, and I had to take a course in either Old Testament or New Testament at Mercer. You had that was it. Well, I said, well, you know, I was bar mitzvah, so I know the Old Testament. I'll take a course in New Testament, like I'm some, you know, rabbinic scholar, which I was not, to, by any stretch of anyone's imagination. And I had this professor whose wife was Jewish and a believer, which I didn't even know what that meant. And he said, well, I'm going to have you do for your, you had to do a class paper. And he said, I'm going to have you do an Old Testament prophecy with a New Testament fulfillment. This is like literally Greek to me. I, you know, I'm trying to figure out what he's talking about. So he gives me the 53rd chapter of Isaiah. Who would believe our report? And to who the arm of the Lord has been revealed? You, have to, you know the scripture verse. So I did this kind of you know, analysis, and I've been doing that. I still use the yellow legal paper. Actually, I don't use yellow anymore because you know, as I've gotten older, white paper's better than yellow for the eyes, but I, I still do the legal pad. I still write my stuff out, old school, as my children who now have children tell me. And I wrote this like list out. I had to do this paper of, is Jesus the Messiah, is he not? And kind of came to the intellectual conclusion that Jesus was the Messiah. But it was very much, in, I took, yeah, it makes sense. The scriptures line up. Jesus could be the Messiah. Okay. And then I go to this Messianic music presentation at this Christian Missionary Alliance Church. And at the end of the presentation, Stuart Dowerman, who's been my friend for, my goodness, 40 years, um, almost, uh, gave an invitation. And I walked down the aisle of that church. And... Uh, I'll never forget, there was a woman sitting right up front, and I think, Mitch, she was the representative from the ABMJ. And she, you know, talked to me after I did the prayer with Stuart, and she tells me, she goes, now look, if you get thrown out of your house, I was living at home, going to school, you could stay with us. And I'm thinking, thrown out of my house? <laughs> so Pam and I went to a Wendy's, yeah, you remember these things. I say, you get older, some things you'll never, well, these were important moments. We went to the Wendy's on North Decatur Road. And I said, am I getting thrown out of my house? And then we're 19-year-old kids. And Pam goes, I hope not. Um, maybe you shouldn't say anything tonight. I said, that's a good idea. <laughs> so I go home, drop Pam off. I don't speak to her mother that night. I go home, but it's still late. It's like midnight. Walk past my parents' bedroom. My father says, where have you been? Not like in an accusatory way. Oh, just out with Pam, okay. I go, sit in the, go to sleep in the bedroom, which I shared with my brother. And I'm thinking, you know, he really asked me what I was doing and I really did not give the honest answer. So I said, okay, now I want you to think about this. Now it's about two o'clock in the morning and your 19 year old son comes to your bedroom door <laughs> and says, dad, I need to talk to you tonight. Whatever he was thinking, this wasn't as bad. <laughs> so we went downstairs to the family meeting room, which was the kitchen. It was a small kitchen in our house. And, and I said to him, I'll never forget, this is another one of these things indelibly impressed on my mind. 
I w said to my father, I said, Dad, I have something to tell you. I have decided that Jesus is the Messiah. To which my father responded, you've decided? <laughs> he, he said, we'll talk about it in the morning. And about five years of mourning, we never talked about it. They knew I was, I was worshiping. They knew what I believed, but we really did not talk about it. If you enjoyed what you just watched, then please like, comment, or subscribe to our YouTube channel for more great teachings, videos on our work, and the latest updates on our ministry. If you'd like a copy of a free book I wrote entitled Isaiah 53 Explained, then please click on the link provided, and I know that you'll receive it and enjoy it. So God bless you, and shalom.